So now let's look at a, another type of depth of field that you can render out of Maya if you're rendering with mental ray. So I will turn off the native depth of field in this camera. Let me just close this here. And I've already set this up, so let me just break the connection and I'll rebuild it. But here in the camera, down at the bottom here, there's the mental ray uh, menu set. And we have a slot for environment volume and lens shaders. So the thing to, to note about mental ray is that it's designed for creating surface shaders, uh, but it also has uh, utilities for um, adding certain functionality to cameras, uh, to environments, and so on. So there are a series of lens shaders that you can add to a Maya camera to uh, add functionality, like I say. So if we go here into the, let me select this, just start again. So if we go here into the hypershade, this is probably the easiest place to do this. I just selected my camera shape and then I mapped the input and output connection so I can see it here. But here under mental ray, you can see that there is a tab or a, an option for lenses down here. If I just open this up, there are different uh, lenses built in. Well, the one we're interested in is the MIA lens bokeh. So if we add that, you can see that it doesn't have the same type of settings that we saw earlier, but you do have um, similar things. So you don't see enough stop or dist focal distance. Instead, for focal distance, you see plane. Uh, instead of f-stop, you see a radius, so how wide your depth of field is going to be. But it also gives us um, some other good options like samples. So you can increase the quality here without turning up the overall quality in the scene. And then you can turn on the blade count. Uh, so uh, an aperture is a hole in the lens that can open and close, but it's comprised of overlapping blades. And the shape of the aperture will be determined by the number of blades and the angle here. Now you can turn on use bokeh, which means that bright highlights that are blurred out will uh, assume the shape of the aperture. So depending on the number of blades, might be hexagon, octagon, uh, triangle, whatever. Um, but that's a, it's a photographic flaw in some ways of rendering the world, but it's a very um, distinctive uh, cue for photographic realism. Okay, so we just want to uh, connect this uh, shader to the camera, so you can just middle mouse drag it onto this lens shader option here. Now it's connected. By default, it's turned on. The plane is set to 100, which is too far away from a, for us. Remember, our object is only 28 units away. So let's render this. So I'll open up the last render, and we'll save this one. And now we'll render again using the MIA bokeh shader. Now this will also add to the render time fairly considerably. So you can already see that there's a great deal of blur and probably too much for what we're after here. Okay, so you can see that there is a very, very narrow region of clarity. Just you can see it on the edge here. That's where the object is 28 units away. Here where this uh, dendrite is coming towards us, it's totally blurred out. It's very grainy. It doesn't look very good. So we actually want a little more uh, in terms of uh, clarity here. So more of the soma we want to be clear. So here is where we can change the radius. So if we set this to, let's say, 3, save this image. I'm just going to render this part so we can see what that's doing without re-rendering the whole scene.
so that seems to have acted in the opposite way. So if we compare these, so that was when the radius was set to one. This was with the radius set at three. So let's reduce this amount to 0.1. Render this again. Save this image. So you can see already that this is giving us much more clarity. So let's try something in between. So 0 0.75, save this image. So now we're getting something closer. So we're getting some of it in focus, but already this part of the soma is out of focus. So that again is too tight. So we can loosen that up by going to say 0 0.5. So you just have to play around with this a little bit to get it working the way you want. Now with the moving camera, of course, uh, this can make things difficult because the focal plane will be changing. So again, this is going out of focus quite quickly. So I might even go a little bit lower. Uh, let's say 0 0.3. Save this image. Render this again. So I can already see that's more focused in the middle. And then it's blurring out as it comes towards us and goes away. So you have to just work with these units. It depends on the size of your scene, the size of your object, and so on. So if we save this image, we can see the differences. So this was at a very high number. This is at a very low number. And this is something in between. You can turn on use bokeh and it will show um, things that are blurred out in the distance that are bright highlights. It will shape them like the aperture or you can load a bokeh image so uh, um, uh, the shape that you want if it's something that's not easy that can't be described with the blade count and the blade angle. So we can also include our, uh, pardon me, increase our samples here. So if I turn this up to 16, let's do a full render so we can see how it looks. And that's done. So you can see now that took a minute and a half to do this one frame. And we're only working at half HD here. So this is a very simple scene. So you can see that this um, demands a lot of the renderer. So you have to do a lot of testing before and be sure that this is what you want to achieve because it will uh, take a big hit on the renders. Uh, just as a side note, if you want to change which part is in focus, because if we look at this uh, dendrite or whatever that's sticking out here, this is kind of blurry. Um, and when we select the object, it tells us that it's you know 28 units away, but that's the middle of the center of the object. If we want to um, figure out how far this part of the object is away from us, a good way to do that is just to maybe create a locator and move that around your scene. And so right now it's saying the, the locator is about 27 units away. But if I hold down V, middle mouse click here, it'll snap to this vertex. Now it tells me that that's 21 units away. So you can use a locator to show you how far different parts are away so you can set the focus that way. Now you could probably even find a way using the distance tool to automate this process. Having a locator you can move around the world that will update the, the distance of the focal plane. So this is um, a good solution if you really need to show depth of field and the 2D compositing methods aren't adequate which is something I'll talk about in the next video. 
uh, you just have to be willing to trade off render time for quality of render here and sometimes it's totally worth it. Thanks.